Okay, here we are with a customer's MacBook Pro 15 inch late 2011 MacBook. Um, it's uh, got currently got 4 gig and it's got a 500 gig traditional hard drive. Um, usually, what we do is we fire it up um, just to make sure um, that it works properly before we do everything. Um, here, you'll see. Currently has 4 gig of memory. Um, let's see. The storage is 500 gig, but it is not a solid state drive. So at this point, we we'll shut it down. And uh, customer has uh, Word, Office, some fan software, you know. So we also show you how to clone the data once you put the new drive in. So the first thing you want to do is shut it down. Um, it's always very important, so especially with the memory and the hard drive because you can cause all kinds of errors on the boot up. Um, make sure it's fully off and it's a shutdown, not sleep mode. You will know when the cursor goes away on there and you give it a few more seconds. As you can see it's a little slow shutting down. Um, between the 4 gig and not having a solid state, um, this is usually the case with these. Um, you'll see how much faster it is once we do that. All right, it's there. So now it's off. All right, so now we pull the screws off. Uh, this particular Mac just uses regular uh, screwdriver. Uh, it's, a, it's a smaller one. Um, I recommend when you take these out, um, keep the order that you take them out. You will notice that these are longer. Um, the three of the four back posts by the hinges are longer. So, uh, yeah, we use this magnet. Uh, I fix it. It's a great thing. Um, it's labeled for, you know, mostly PC repair, but we will use it now just to keep the layout of the screws. Um, these side screws right here on a lot of Macs right here are actually, sl you know, they look the same as the other small screws. But they're not. They're actually missing the bevel because of the way they go in there. So um, they will fit, but like I said, it's usually best to you know put them in the order that they go. So the first thing you want to do is take these screws off. Uh, they should come out pretty good. If you know, I recommend an iFix a toolkit. Uh, not sponsored by them yet, but just recommend it. Uh, there. Once you get them off, you know, just grab it by the back here, pull this lid off, and you know. First thing you want to do, what we do is, uh, you notice the fan stuff's a little dirty here, so we use a compressor where we can keep things clean with a vacuum. So we have a vacuum. Alright, that wasn't too bad, so. Um, you know, no need for the compressor. Um, as you can see in here, well, so it's got uh, a stock Apple memory, which you usually can tell because it's black, um, with the circuit board on there, um, which is uh, PC 3L 12-800. So, uh, you know, you want to order the four gig sticks, which we have right here, um, you know, in the same sizes, you know, the basically, um, you know, basically the same sizes uh, you will see that uh, they do run slightly different speeds but I always recommend putting that in there um, you'll see an aftermarket battery in here that the customer must have put in uh, I'm not a big fan of that um, but they have it in here so at this point I guess it's working um, that's on them uh, so also here there is a memory um, bracket broke so um, for video purposes uh, you know usually you just take your finger slide them both to the side and they pop out uh, this actually has a broke one, so but we will do that. Same thing with the bottom memory stick. Uh, notice the memory stick is offset, so when you put the new four gigs in, uh, you put them in, and same thing, you push them in, and then you slide them down. Uh, you shouldn't have to put too much force on them. Put them in, slide them down. Uh, this is the memory bracket right here, so uh, you know. Um, the memory bracket this is the battery right here so we're gonna pop off the battery um, should have did that first before the memory not a big deal uh, since the laptop's off this makes sure the laptop's fully off 
Um, all right, so the memory's done. So that's how quick that is. Um, so um, everything else looks pretty good in here. Don't see any spills. Uh, you know, usually if you see spills, take an alcohol pill. You know, you know, clean it up a little bit with the alcohol pad. Um, but no need to do any of that on here. Everything looks pretty good, uh, with the exception of battery. All right, so this is the traditional hard drive. Uh, this is why this thing doesn't run too good. It's a 500 gig. We don't need the size for the customer. We need the speed. Uh, basically, this bracket holds that in. So once again, two Phillips screws. Um, I recommend when you take this bracket out, so, so it's easier later, um, lay it right here so you know exactly how it goes in. All right, at this point, the hard drive lifts up. Be careful here. Um, this pulls off the side here, very important. Just do it slowly. These things are very fragile. If you look on here, uh, once again, Dell, you know, Dell, sorry. <laughs> Apple puts a um, very good um, way, you know, they want you to have uh, specialized screw sets on there. So that um, is a, a particular drive. So um, we have to switch it out. Uh, that drive itself, um, basically, um, it needs a, you know, special driver to get it off. Um, you know, it, it's actually on an iFixit kit, or if you're buying that, it is a Torx, it is a T6, um, which you don't need the iFixit kit, you need the T6. And once again, you will pull these four screws off here. Um, you know, I put them on a magnet, magnet, because I have, uh, I'll whack them and then they'll go flying. So you pull all four of these out, um, then you set this drive off to the side. Uh, you'll see some videos where people will take the plastic piece off and, you know, which is this and move it over to the other drive. No need. Um, I don't see any purpose in that. There. Um, so we put that off to the side for now. Um, so this is uh, the drive that we're putting in. Uh, this is a Mushkin Raw made by Newegg, uh, 250 gig drive, um, solid state. Um, these are currently about $35. We use them. We've had very good luck with them. The price is right. Uh, so we will continue to use them until, you know, we have issues with them. It's been about a good two years. So I'm pretty safe to say that uh, none of them came back so we'll use them you would just put the screws back in just like the other ones came out of the other drive all four screws don't mind that that's my phone all right so we'll put the screws in here uh, when you put these screws in just put them in you know snug tight you don't need to crank down on them you know they, these drives are you know just aluminum casings they will yeah, but um, you know, snug them. Should have four screws on there. Um, at this point, once you get those in, um, you will don't need it. Don't need the T6 no more. So we put that back. Um, so now we're gonna just put this in, just as this once again be very soft with this. Wiggle it in. All right, these back screw mounts go into. The back side mount, this lays on here. Lay that on there. Once again, don't have to go crazy with these. Put that in. Like... Okay. So that's on there. So at this point, um, what we like to do is, um, I'm not a big fan of leaving the bottom off. You know, stuff can go crazy, stuff can get stuck in a fan. But you also want to make sure that everything was installed right and you want to put all these screws in. So what I usually do, um, once again, this is preference based on there, is I'm going to put the battery in, um, put the top in. I'd put, you know, adjacent screws in. So basically this one screw here, you know, snug tight it. This one screw here, snug tight it. Um, you can do a lot of research. Uh, this is a 2011. This will the highest it will go to is High Sierra. Um, you know that. You know you can get that pretty much info all out there on the web. Uh, this that. So now at this point you will grab um, a thumb drive. We will make videos. You grab the thumb drives. Of course, naturally we have ours already made. So you want to go grab a High Sierra thumb drive. Um, Insert the thumb drive here. Um, open it up. All right, no turn on yet. So now you're gonna take the old drive. Um, this is a USB 3 
to SATA adapter. Um, it doesn't need to be USB 3, to, you know, because of this machine doesn't support the speed, but it's backwards compatible. You can pick these up on Newegg for about $10 or eBay. Um, you know, if you're working on PCs, it's a must. So you basically plug that in here. This is basically going to turn the original drive into an external drive. So at that point, we're going to put that in, right? We're going to put both of them in. Um, I'd probably highly recommend at this point also um, getting a power source onto the to the MacBook. Um, you know, um, once again, for the video, I'm not gonna do it. So as soon as you turn on, you're gonna hold down the option key. Uh, that's the boot menu for, for this particular Mac and most of the Macs. You turn, hold that in until you see it show you display of the boot, bootable devices. So on here you see it sees the MacDOS HD, which is the old one, then you see install MacDOS. That's the thumb drive with the installer on, so we're gonna hit that. Now we're gonna let it load. So now the next procedure why this is loaded, I'll explain to you is you know, something that you don't see much on the web, people get stumped on, and uh, you know, we're gonna show you. So due to the certificate expiring on operating, you know, operating systems and stuff um, with the Mac, um, you need to go change the date. Uh, we use September 1st, 2019. Uh, uh, basically, if you don't change that date, it will tell you that the, uh, the operating system is corrupted or just can't be installed, all that. Um, you know, this is just a simple thing just to go set the date back through terminal. Uh, we'll show you, we'll walk you through that uh, in a few seconds. Um, that will uh, basically, you know, fix it. Um, where it will install, you know, naturally once the machine's done cloning, installing, whatever you're doing, uh, is that. Um, but uh, you know, that's if you're going to be installing it fresh, you know, um, uh, for that. Um, this is going to be a clone, so we don't really have to do that. But I figure I bring it up for people out there that really aren't doing a clone. Uh, once again, we're going to be shooting out a lot of videos, so. Uh, we will um, probably do a video on that soon. Uh, the other good thing about having the magnet, as you see, I just bumped it, you know, and nothing went flying all over the place. <laughs> so the magnet's already uh, working out here. Uh, plus, it'll remind you to put the screws back in when you're all done so the customer doesn't pick up their laptop without the screws in the bottle. Uh, don't laugh, that's actually happened before. <laughs> so, uh, so we try our hardest to, uh, you know, not make the same mistake, you know, before. Um, as you notice, this is booting slightly slow. Uh, you know, people watching the videos said I thought this is gonna make it quicker. Um, it's basically because it's booting to a USB. It's not a, a you know high-speed USB ports in this. It's also you know you know building that up there. Uh, but at the end of the day, you know that's that that's that. Um, so we will let this load. Um, and pretty much, I'm gonna show you the clone thing. Uh, and uh, you know, we're gonna put some stuff in our comments soon. We're gonna shoot videos for for a fresh install on you know similar models. Um, you know, feel free to comment. Um, you know, if you're not fully understanding the thing with the date, but basically what you're doing is you're gonna go to the terminal and use the date command and set it back to 2019, which tricks the USB drive into working. Uh, when that first started, uh, when those those uh, certificates expired, we. You know, we were stumped and we couldn't find a whole lot of videos and you know and uh you know we've been you know, i've been doing this 26 years now so so uh you know um so you know i figure i'll fi bring that up in this video because uh i know it helped me out um, um also uh this setup right here while this is loading uh what you gonna say uh you can use to make time machine drives and all that so at this point now, um, we're gonna go to disk utility on this. Uh, we're gonna hit the we're gonna hit the disk utility. We're gonna um, open up, you know, the disk utility. You should see the internal drive that we put on there, uh, which is the brand new solid state right here. And you should also see our external, which is here. Uh, so the first thing you want to do is you want to see what the original was, was Mac OS extended journaled. Uh, that's good. So you want to go up to the new drive we put in, which is the, the model you want to hit erase. Um, we, I like to call it Macintosh SSD because they usually do Macintosh. Make sure that's the same as the drive you're doing. Uh, hit erase. Should erase fairly quick. Uh, you know, it is a solid state and hit, you know, done. 
Now what you're going to do is you're going to go up to that drive and uh, you're going to hit on that drive, you're going to hit restore. Um, you know, it's going to say, you know, Macintosh SSD will be erased and replaced with the data on the volume selected. So that means the new drive is going to be erased. Um, here, we don't want to replace it with the solid state, I mean with the USB drive, but we do want to do it with the Macintosh HD. So that could be named different on yours, but it's going to be this external drive up here. So you're going to hit that. And basically, you're going to hit restore. Um, and if you hit show details, we're going. Now, the way you'll know you did something wrong is if it crashes out right off the bat, don't be alarmed. You might have picked the wrong one. Uh, do make sure that your the drive's inside and restore. I highly recommend making a time machine backup prior to doing this uh, if you're new to it. Because, uh, you know, when I first started doing this, I have, you know, I erased drives. Man. Um, at this point, you know, I'm going to pause the video um, and, you know, you don't need to sit here and watch this video why this restores so uh i will pause it and you know and wait till it's near done okay so there it is at the end you can see it's verifying um and then when that gets there so that took about i think it was about 10 15 minutes uh this particular customer didn't have much data on there so at the end of the day uh you know every machine's different so when you go do yours you know it could take you know an hour two hours if you have a ton of data on there uh you know but it'll eventually finish it'll say done so at this point uh you'll click done there uh you'll click the red x there uh up here to shut down and basically you're going to shut it down.